Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 21. Today I am going to be showing you how to do picots. The method that I am going to show you is the one from my book, Early Style Hardanger, and it's the traditional Norwegian method of doing picots. It's a little bit different than what other people do, but it's the most traditional method, and so that's the way I'm going to show you today. It's also not a particularly difficult method of doing it. It does involve Involve a little bit of fiddling as you probably know if you've tried uh, picots before but with some practice and with some careful studying of the method you will get it figured out. The book has both left and right handed instructions in it and I will be showing you with left with my left hand today like so the needle in my left hand but there is absolutely no reason why you couldn't swip, swap over and use the needle in your right hand it is the same method. Today I am wearing my Hardanger shirt and I thought I'd wear that today because it has got Pico's in the Hardanger bands that are on the collar and on the cuffs. So you can see them there. Picos are the little knots that sit out the side of the bands, uh, yeah, the, the woven bars, that's what I'm saying. Um, and they just sit out there like little knots. People love them and they find them difficult. So that's why you're getting this video. So I'm gonna show it to you close up. Oh, that's the back. Um, this is a, uh, this was a cuff that I made as a test for my shirt and I actually decided it was too wide in the end. But you can see the little picots sitting out the side there. They are just like a little French knot at the side and they create a beautiful shape. So that's what I have to show you today. Um, I'll get in there, do the demo. I'm going to do it in coloured thread on white fabric so that you can hopefully see it really well. And hopefully by the end of it, you will know exactly how to do a pico. So to start weaving, I insert my needle from the side, go under two of the threads, then from the other side, and just keep going backwards and forth. After I do each of these stitches, I'm pinching and pulling because the bar is supposed to be narrow. I don't normally do this in a hoop, but I'm doing it in a hoop today because it holds the fabric out flatter so that you can see better. And that is actually the point of doing this so that you can see it. So to start my pico, I take a stitch as if I'm going to weave the bar, but I leave it sitting out loose. Then from the side, I insert my needle into that loop from above and with the side that's on the woven end not the working end I'm going to wrap that around the needle twice and you can see that I've done that then I'm going to pull the working end of the thread and pull it back towards the woven part of the bar and that helps lock those wraps in nice and tight. Then I'm going to pull it through and you can see that I'm pulling it towards the center of the bar and then I pull it out to the side and have, sorry, it's really difficult when it's in a hoop. I'm not used to doing it in a hoop so I don't really have great access to it. And you can see that those wraps are at the base of the bar there. And then to finish it off just take your needle behind and it sits out to the side. If you pull that too hard, it will slip to the back. We actually want it sitting out the side, so don't pull it too hard. To do the one on this side, we create a loop again, as if we're going to weave our bar. And this is the side that we'll be working with this time because it's the side that's closest to the woven section. Don't use this section because that's the working end of the thread. So insert your needle into that loop from above and then wrap it around the needle twice and you can see that that's happened there. Then pull the thread and take it back towards the woven end of the bar and that will lock those loops, the wraps in nice and tight. Pull it towards the centre and then at the last bit out to the side. And then to finish take it to underneath those uh, the the threads at the side there as if you're going to continue weaving and then finish off weaving the bar. So basically what you've done is created two little French knots that sit out the side of the bar. 
This is the traditional way of making picots in Norway. It is a little bit different to what people are used to, but it provides a really good result. And that's our finished bar with our picots at the side. Well, I hope that you now feel confident to go and make your own picots. The method that I showed is the one that's in my book, Early Style Hardanger. In the book, there are both left-handed and right-handed instructions. The left-handed ones are pink, the right-handed ones are green. You can see that there are lots of step-by-steps with clear diagrams and descriptions. So with them and the video, you should have no trouble at all creating your own picots. Good luck with that, have fun with your stitching and see you next time. Bye.